I trust that, no, yes, number 10 is where uh, the first question comes up that is not X's and Y's. That is where I would expect you people to have a question first, but maybe you had one from before. Hey, oh, maybe you remembered that X and Y's are just independent variables and dependent variables and it's the exact same thing. And maybe you have no questions. So, which is it? Questions. <clears throat> Hit me. Which reminds me, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, Nathan, I'll get right back to you. I am not going to be here for your class tomorrow because I'll be refereeing rugby. So, you, there's two reviews to go with this unit. You'll do one of them tomorrow because we'll do a lesson today. You'll start the review tomorrow. Obviously, we won't have gone over that lesson tomorrow, but you can start the review and do what you can with it. Okay? All right. Uh, so, number 10. Nathan, we were talking about this one. Uh, I have temperature and I have the speed of sound. Now, we have done this exact question before. Which of those is the independent variable? Temperature. So temperature is X and speed of sound is Y. Well, 10 is a temperature, 10 degrees Celsius. So that's an X. 10. Speed of sound, 337. That's a Y, 337. There's, a, there's an X, there's a Y. Then we've got another temperature, 30, and another speed of sound, 349. There is a second X and a second Y. I want an equation. Well, I have two X's and two Y's. What does that allow me to find? Slope. I have a slope and I have two different points. Do I automatically have an equation now? Once I have the slope, I have the points, and I can use point-slope form, can't I? So how do I find that slope? Same way we've been finding all the slopes. What is it? Right, so it's 349 minus 337 over 30 minus 10, which is... 349 minus 337 is 12. 30 minus 10 is 20. That simplifies to 3 fifths. So my slope is 3 fifths and I have two points. So y minus 337 equals 3 fifths x minus 10, if you want to use that point, or y minus 349 equals 3 fifths x minus 30, if you want to use that point. And then use that to determine the speed of sound when the air temperature is zero. Is that an x or a y value? I'm just going to keep looking at you. Which is it? Because you just said both of them. So it's an, so what would number would go there? Zero, right? So then you would just solve this equation using 0 minus 10. OK, fair enough. Any other questions from pages 208, 209, and 210? Of course, you should not You should by now recognize that it's all just X's and Y's, or IV's and DV's. And otherwise, it's the exact same formulas, which, again, you don't have to memorize. You'll get them. Everyone is good, then? Okay. Let's move it along, then, cabbages. Page... 212. What are the two forms of equations that we know right now? We know point slope. 
which is y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. And we know all sorts of stuff about that, right? We know the starting point is x1 and y1, except what? It was yesterday. It was like 21 hours ago. Except it's not what you see. What is it really? The opposite. So if I gave you y minus 7 equaled 2 thirds x plus 2, what would your starting point be? Negative 2, 7. And then we would do our slope, which would be what? How do I do that? I go to this point, and then I go where? Up, 2, and right three or down two and left three so we all know how to deal with that one yeah okay what's the second type we have which is called slope intercept form and how is slope intercept form very similar well nathan's already told us it's y equals mx plus b Still have a y, still have an x, still have an m, but our starting point here, b, is our y-intercept. So that is our starting point. And then other than that, we do the same thing. Everyone's good? Okay, well now you're going to learn a third form. And we've already used this form, I just haven't given it a name. This form is written this way. That is general form. Yes, sir. Get it? General form. Get it? Sometimes general form is a major problem. Major problem. General form. Anyways, all of you should be able to look at that general form and tell me stuff you already know about it. What do you already know? There's an X and a Y, which means what? Independent, dependent variable. So if I were to write this, this construction, 3, negative 5, what would you do with those? Where would the 3 go? In the X spot. Where would the negative 5 go? in the y spot. Now please notice that x and y are in all forms. Now here's a mistake kids always make. b is a constant, isn't it? It's just a number, right? Is c a constant? Yeah, it's just a number, isn't it? Is C your y-intercept? No. Why not? Right. C is not the y-intercept because y isn't isolated. So, let's stop and think for a second. We already know how to graph point-slope form. Go to the starting point, count the slope. We already know how to graph slope-intercept form. Go to the y-intercept, count the slope. How could we graph this? What would help us? Pardon me? We could isolate y, and then we'd have slope-intercept form. We could also do the intercepts, couldn't we? Because if we were doing the x-intercept, y would drop out. And if we were doing the y-intercept, x would drop out. Then we could do algebra there. Everybody cool? All right. So the goal for this unit, not this unit, this section, is to simply move the equations around 
so we can graph them quickly without worrying about substituting and all that stuff. All right? So let's look at this very first one. We see that we've got 3x, 2y, 8, and I want to convert it to slope-intercept form so I can graph it. So as Satjot says, if I want slope-intercept form, what do I have to do? What is the difference between the blue and the yellow? Y isn't isolated. So all I've got to do is isolate Y. Now a great many of you automatically start moving Y around. You, that's okay. But if Y is, don't do more steps than you need to do is what I'm trying to say. If we are going to isolate Y, because we all agree that we need to isolate Y, what does that mean? That means Y is positive and has no coefficient. So there is Y right now. Is it positive? No. So we should make it positive. We would move it over here. Now some of you, as soon as you do that, you're going to rewrite 3x plus 8 equals 2y. That's fine. A bunch of you, though, are going to see this y over here on the left, and you're going to be like, oh, y has to be on the left. Eh, so I'm going to move it back over here, and then, oh, that makes it negative, and then you're back to where you started. Don't do that. Because this that I've written in red is the exact same thing as this that I've written in green. And then the Y is on the left where you like to see it. But because you guys tend to have your attention wander a little bit, you stop paying attention, you think that this is the way it has to be written without recognizing that Y equals MX plus B is the exact same thing as MX plus B equals Y. Okay? All right, so what is our job now? Get rid of the coefficient by dividing by 2. Here's the next mistake you're going to make. You're going to forget to divide everything by 2. And what does that get me? Y, y e 3 over 2x plus 4. And I can graph that in about 2 seconds, can't I? Where do I go? 4. On which axis? On the y-axis. Why? Because that's the y-intercept. Because the y-intercept is at 0, comma, y, correct? And that 0 is what? An x. There's an x. So if I put 0 there, what's going to happen to 3 halves? It's going to drop out, leaving me with y equals 4. When y equals 4, and I don't know why, y equals 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now... How do I graph it? Rise over run. So what's my slope? 3 over 2. So how do I do that? Up 3, 1, 2, 3, and right 2. Or down 1, 2, 3, and left 2. And then I make a nice straight line. How long will that pattern go on? Forever. Down three, left two, down three, left two, down three, left two, up three, right two, up three, right two, up three, right two, up three. Right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This algebra we're doing, you learned in grade seven. There's just some new names for it, and you're learning what you can do with that algebra. Everybody cool? All right, let's look at the next one. It looks very similar, doesn't it? It looks a lot like general form, right? But this is what we call, and don't ask me why we have to have two names for it. This is what we call standard form. And standard form is AX plus BY equals C. 
instead of C being over with everything, it's just hopped over here. I don't know why we have to have a second name for it, but math guys made a second name for it. Does it affect how we do the math? If that was Kaboobly Heinz form, would we do the same math? Exactly. So does it matter that it has a different name? No. So how are we going to get that onto a graph? We're going to... Okay, that's exactly right, Nathan. That is what you are going to do in this question. Why is that not the exact answer I'm looking for? Because you, you, you're going to do the exact right thing. You want to put it in a different form. But when you say switch the Y and the 8, how many questions does that work for? Just this one. So it would be a better way to say the answer that is right. You're doing the right thing. Whoa, you're going crazy. But yeah, that, that's going way, that's going super far. But good, exactly, okay. We want to isolate Y, right? That's what we want to do. You're exactly right, because you knew I got to isolate Y, so I got to switch the Y and the A, right? So, but the reason I'm trying to get you to say isolate Y is because that's the thing you're always going to do. doesn't matter what the numbers are. Even if I have a bunch of crazy decimals and crazy fractions, what are we going to do? Isolate Y. Everybody understands, right? So, what should move here? Nathan's already told us what should move here. Why does he want to switch the Y and the 8? Rylan. He wants Y to be? Isolated. And isolated Y means Y is what? Positive. And right now, what is Y? Negative. So, now, I know that you know that you got to switch the Y and the 8, right? But I'm the teacher, so I'm going to actually do both steps. So there's no concerns. So 3x minus 4y equals 8. I'm going to move that. Now I have 3x equals 8 plus 4y, right? Now I'm going to move the 8. What's going to happen to it? 3x minus 8 is going to equal 4y. And then what am I going to do? Divide by 4. What's the mistake some of you are going to make? You're going to forget to divide it all by 4. And what is my final equation going to look like? Y equals 3 fourths X minus 2. Is that the same as... 3 fourths x minus 2 equals y. Is that the same as 3x over 4 minus 2 equals y? Yeah. Is that the same as 0.75x minus 2 equals y? Yes. Everybody understands, right? Okay, so where do I go? Negative 2 on the y-axis, and then what? Up, 1, 2, 3, and right, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or down, 1, 2, 3, and left, 1, 2, 3, 4. Everybody understands? This is what you see a lot of in real life questions, yes? Because people work with people like to work with decimals. And you'll see that a lot in physics. But remember, if y is isolated, whatever number is with x is our slope. No matter what it looks like. Nathan. Yeah, that's how we find the grade of a road. That's a 75% grade, which is crazy. No road is that steep. That's like a double black diamond ski hill. Triple black diamond. Roads, the, the steepest road I have ever driven on is a 20 degrees slope. 
which is um, the hill between uh, on the over the mountains to Bella Coola in Williams Lake, way up there. A very steep hill like the Coquihalla. There's like seven and eight percent grades, and it's steep. Seventy-five. Oh, it's almost straight up, right? On this graph, it doesn't look like much, but it is. Everybody cool? All right. All right. What's different about number three? Why is it positive? Why is already positive? What's different about what I'm asking you to do? I ask you to use the X and the Y intercepts. If we move around Y, will we automatically get the Y intercept? If we isolate Y? Yeah. And then if we isolate Y, it's pretty easy to get the X intercept, isn't it? Or am I allowed to do this? Could I use those? Who makes that choice? You do. If you're going to do this, you got to do algebra right now, right? If you're going to switch this around to slope intercept form, then you got to just do the algebra a little later. And then you won't have to do this one, will you? Which one do you want to do? Or should you make your choice now and I'll do both? What do you guys feel you need? Because in my mind, the smart thing to do here is make you guys choose one and do it and I'll do both. Okay, go. Choose one. Either turn it into slope intercept form or use the intercepts. Okay, everybody good? Everybody good? Everybody good? Everybody made a choice? Okay, now here's where math has to get, or no, here's where me, I have to get picky. If I didn't have that, yeah, just wait a sec, there's a reason. If that was the question, graph that, could you do either of them? And I would give you, out of three, I would give you three out of three, correct? Everybody understand? If I had, ah, what the heck happened there? If I have that instruction, am I allowed to do this one. Would I give you full marks, do you think? You found the y-intercept. So what would I give you if you did the red version? I give you probably two out of three. Right? The black version would get you the full marks because of the instructions. Everybody understand? But you'll notice it's the same thing, right? Once you found the y-intercept, 5, you went down 5 and over 2, you got the x-intercept anyway. Everybody understand? Everybody sees what I did there? Everybody can do one of the, uh, one of the two ways? Well, you should have been able to do the x y intercepts from before. Everyone is good? 
Okay, let's turn over on to 213. Uh-oh, it's an unlucky question. Write down an example of the equation of a line in each form. Okay? Each form. What are our forms? General. Yes, sir. Slope intercept. And point slope. And we're reminded that general has that ugly cousin, right? Standard. So, what? Yeah, you can do uh, x and y intercepts pretty easily. Okay, so I want an equation of a line in all three of those. Because once you know general, you know standard, right? Can you do this question right now? Pardon? You have no information. You could give it to me in regular terms, right? A AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Y minus Y equals MX plus B and Y minus Y equals M bracket X minus X, right? You could do that, but that doesn't tell me anything. That just tells me you know how to copy stuff down, yeah? So here is what I'm going to give you this. The line goes through four, nine, and negative three, one. That's the information you have. I want, how many equations do you need to write right now? Three, because once you know general, you know standard, right? So go. What are you going to do right now to figure that out? What's the first thing you should do if you're ever in doubt in this unit? No, 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 no. Find the slope. Always find slope. Why is slope good? Doesn't that automatically almost give you two of your questions? So how are we going to find that slope, everyone? Okay, so what's it going to be? What are my options for the numerator here? 1 minus 9 or 9 minus 1. Does it matter which one I do? Why would I suggest 9 minus 1? It'll be positive. You guys work better with positive numbers. 9 minus 1. So what does that make this y automatically? If I'm going to use 9 minus 1, what's that? Y. Y. Two. So what does that make this guy? X2. So what goes right here? 4 minus then what? Minus 3. Which is, what's 9 minus 1? 8. What's 4 minus minus 3? So now do I know my slope? Do I now automatically know, which one do I automatically know? General slope or point slope right now? I know point slope right now, don't I? How many versions of point slope do I know? One? Two. Why do I know two points, two versions of point slope form? Because I have two different points. Right? Okay. So point slope form is the easiest one to do because we've got a slope and two points. What is one version of point slope form? Point slope A. What will it be? This was yesterday's work, ladies and gentlemen. Some, one of the 30 of you knows this. Not X. Y. One, okay, Ryland, that's cool. Equals what? Eight sevenths, bracket. X plus three, because it's opposite, right? What's the other version?
Is everybody good? All right. Now, what is logically the next one of this we should work with now? Why? Because I have a slope and I have X's and Y's, don't I? So it'll be really easy to find B, won't it? So slope intercept is slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. Well, y equals, what's our m? 8 over 7 x plus b. Do I know a y and an x here? Which should I use? It doesn't matter at all, does it? Which one do you want to use? 4 and 9? OK. 4 is an x, yes? So where will that go? In the x spot, right? So 9 is a y, so where will it go? 9 is a y, so where will it go? For y, because y's are y's. 9 equals 8 over 7 times 4 plus b, right? What is 8 over 7 times 4? Thirty-two over seven, which is how many times does seven go into thirty-two? Four times, leaving how much left over? Four sevenths, right? So this is nine equals four and four sevenths plus b, correct? I need b by itself, don't I? So what do I gotta do with this guy? Move them over here, right? What's 9 minus 4? 5. And then I take away 4 more sevenths, right? So it's going to be 4 and 3 sevenths will equal B, correct? I mean, I'm doing that in my head, but all of you could subtract that. It would just take you a little bit of time, yeah? So now, if that's B, what slope intercept form? 8 over 7x, then what's going right here for b? Right, y equals 8 sevenths x plus 4 and 3 sevenths. There's my slope intercept form. Yeah? Everyone agree? What's the only form left? General form. Now remember, general form is what we learned today. I didn't spend a lot of time with it because we already know what all these things are, don't we? But what do you notice? A, B, and C. Do you see any fractions? No. Do you see anything in front of A? No. So we have to have no fractions, and the, the X has to be what? Positive or negative? Positive. So if we take this, y equals 8 over 7x plus 4 and 3 sevenths. And get rid of the fractions and keep x positive. Will I have general form? I will, won't I? Okay, so this is 32 sevenths, right? Oh, sorry, 31 sevenths. 7 times 4 plus 3. 31 sevenths, yes? How will I get rid of those fractions? Wow. Times by seven. What will happen to all of these sevens on the right? They'll disappear. So I will get 8x plus 31, won't I? If I do something to the right, what do I got to do to the left? Same thing. So what's going to be over here? Now, does that almost look like that? What's the only thing that has to move? No. The X is positive. That's what we want. So what's the only thing that has to move? Y. Y is allowed to be negative. 
because I'll explain positive here isn't plus negative 3 the same as minus 3? That's why that's allowed. This guy has nothing in front of him. He has to be positive. So it's going to be 8x, then what? 7y plus 31, and what does all that equal? 0. And there are all three forms. And let's be honest, what, what new did we do today? You learned the word, the term general form, yes? Sir? Nothing? Still again? Jordan, you arrived late. I did a gag where I talked about the new thing, general form, and I said, general form, yes, sir. And sometimes general form is a major problem. What form is this guy in? What form is number 11 in? Point slope. Y minus 4 equals 2 thirds X plus 2. I want general form. What's general form? What do I need in general form? What am I not allowed to have? No negative x. What else? No fractions. What else? What do you see in point slope form that you don't see in general form? You're right. But C is just going to be a number, isn't it? We got numbers over here. What's the only thing that's in point slope form that hasn't been discussed over here? I got to move everything to one side. Yes. Uh, everything on one side. That's actually not something I was thinking of. So that's a fourth thing. Everything on one side. And what's the last thing? Just look visually. What do you see written in blue that you don't see written in pink? No, we already did that. Brackets. No brackets. So, since we got to do all those four things, what do you think we should do first? You want to get rid of the brackets? Okay. How would we get rid of the brackets? If I gave you this, 3x plus 4. How would you get rid of the brackets? You would distribute, wouldn't you? So we could distribute, couldn't we? So if we distribute, I'm going to get y minus 4 equals, what's 2 thirds times x? 2 thirds x plus what's 2 thirds times 2? 4 thirds. Agreed? Right? I got 2 thirds and I got another 2 thirds because there's two of them. I got 4 thirds, yeah? Okay, so have we gotten rid of the brackets? Excellent. What should we get rid of next? You want to get rid of the fractions? Okay. How do I get rid of these divided by 3? Multiply this side by 3. What's going to happen to all those 3s? Gone, gone, gone. And what's left? Two x plus four. But since I multiplied the right by three, hell yeah, what do I got to do? I had to do the same thing the other side. Hey, wait a minute, we got to distribute again. What is it? Minus twelve. Okay. Now I've gotten rid of the fractions. I've gotten rid of the brackets. What's left? Everything on one side and a positive x. Do I have a positive x? So should x move? No. So let's get everything on one side. 
When that y comes over, what's going to happen to it? Minus 3y. When that negative 12 comes over, what's going to happen to it? What's 4 plus 12? Is that general form? Yes. Now I want to show you something else. We're going to do the same thing. Watch, watch. This is something else you can do. How many of you liked distributing that fraction? You're a liar. Everybody hates doing everything with fractions, yes? So, why not get rid of the fraction first? What would get rid of that three? Multiplying this side by three, right? What's the only thing there that's going to cancel? The three. So now I've got two x plus two, and I can multiply this side by three and get my three y minus 12. Now, what am I distributing? Just the two, no fraction. They don't need to because they're in brackets. Let me show you. Two-thirds x equals 12. How would you solve that algebra? You'd get rid of the 3 first, wouldn't you? Cancel. 2x would equal 36, yes? Okay. And then I'd divide by 2, and x would equal 18. Agreed? All right. Well, what math is happening right there? That is 2 thirds times x, correct? Okay. What do those brackets do to x and x and plus 2? Not what they do to them in order of operations. What do brackets physically do in math class? Pardon me? Groups them together. So this is the same thing as this. This is 2 thirds times x. This is 2 thirds times x plus 2. So I could still multiply by 3 and get rid of it because that x isn't getting touched yet. So 3y minus 12 equals 2x plus 4. And you can see we're now at the same spot. We just didn't distribute that fraction because while 2 thirds distributes pretty easily, what if it was an ugly fraction? What if it was 11 73rds x plus 7? Would you want to distribute 11 73rds? So what would you do to get rid of it? Times by 73, and all of a sudden I'm in business, and I'm only distributing whole numbers. Everybody cool? All right. You try it. Page 213. Now, please notice I want all the other forms. Who decides what order to do these in? You do. There's no right order. So we're going to start with y plus 3 equals negative 1 half x minus 1. What are you going to change it to first? Slope intercept or general form? Your choice. Personally, I go to general form first. Yes, sir. I'll let you look at it for a moment, then I'll start. What bugs you? The fraction. Two things should bug you about the fraction this time. It's negative and it's a fraction. So I want to get rid of the negative and the fraction, don't I? If I want to get rid of divided by negative 2, what should I do? Multiply by negative 2. What's going to happen to that 2 and that negative now? 
Gone, gone. What's left now? One times x minus one. Does that change it at all? So what do I got on this side? X minus one. If I multiply the right side by negative two, what do I got to do to this side? What's negative two times y? And what's negative two times three? Now, what do I do with that? Is my x positive? So should I move them? Everything else moves now, correct? Let's move it. What's going to happen to that y? Positive 2y. What's going to happen to that negative 6? Positive 6. What's 6 minus 1? Is that general form? Okay. How do I make that general form's ugly cousin standard form? Just move the 5. So general form is in green. Move the 5. Negative 5 equals x plus 2y. There's standard form. Now what do I do to get slope-intercept form? Isolate y. So I've got negative 5 equals x plus 2y. Let's isolate y. What needs to move? x. What will happen to x when it goes over? It'll become what? Negative x minus 5 equals 2y. Now what? Divide by 2. Where else? Everywhere else. Negative 1 half x minus 5 halves equals y. And there is slope-intercept form. Now, Remember, slope-intercept form can look different. Is this okay? And I'm going to use all shades of blue. Negative x over 2 minus 5 halves equals y. Is that okay? Yes, because x times 1 is negative x. Right? Right? Is this one okay? Um x over negative 2 equal, oh, sorry, minus 5 halves equals y. Is that one okay? Yeah, because 1 over negative 2 is still negative a half, isn't it? Is this one okay? Is that okay? Yep. Is this one okay? I'm running out of blues. Is this one okay? Yeah, because what's five, 5 divided by 2? It's 2.5, isn't it? Is this one okay? Is that one okay? Yes. Could I do a bunch more here? I could, but I'm out of room. What's the point I'm trying to make? There's many ways you could write it, and just because it's not written the way you see it, it might have the same information. You have to be ready to deal with it. Is everybody good? Okay. Your job, and you have half an hour with which to work, is page 214. Now, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, please. It's only page 214 today. Listen, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Tomorrow, your job, tonight, and you've got the answers for it, and you seem pretty comfortable with it, is page 214. Wednesday, you're going to work on page... To 16 to 221, I think it is. Now, listen, you people are going to have Ms. I don't even know her last name. She teaches English, she had a student teacher. 
Crosa. Crosa? Crosa. You're going to have Miss Crosa. Now, I don't know Miss Crosa very well, but if I were to guess, she probably doesn't like math. Most English teachers hate math. So you're not going to be able to get a lot of assistance tomorrow. Some of those questions on page 216 to 221 are a little bit tricky, but they're all still X's and Y's. Okay? Just try them. I am not going to mark them on Thursday until you have a chance to ask about them. Do you understand what I am saying? So do as much as you can. If you don't get one or two questions, that's okay. Ask me about it Thursday. You'll get a little more done Thursday. And then we'll mark it. Everybody cool? Now, does that mean on Thursday you can ask me about every single question on page 216 to 221? No, of course not. Because you already know how to do all of them. I expect a question or two. But you know how to do all of it. Clear? Have a look at it tonight. And gauge. You'll have 80 minutes to work on it tomorrow. Gauge how much time you need. Does everyone understand? And then Thursday I'm back because... They aren't playing any rugby until the afternoon Thursday. And I believe I have you people first thing in the morning, second uh, thing in the morning on Thursday. I think it's DCBA. Okay? And remember, Thursday is a short day of class because of Storm the Wall. You will be in class for an hour. You will, be in you will go to block D, block C. Then you will have a free block to do Storm the Wall, which will bump into lunch, and then you will have a B and an A in the afternoon. All right? This Thursday, the day after tomorrow. And, ladies and gentlemen, that is not 100% official. They haven't emailed out that schedule yet, but that is what every teacher's best guess is for what will be happening on Thursday. If it changes tomorrow, Miss Crosa will tell you, I hope, or one of your other teachers will. All right? Okay. You all have work to do. You've got half an hour to do it. Go.